Okay guys, in this video, I wanna answer one of the questions that I get most frequently, and that is how do I get a cash flow positive condo in Toronto as an investment property? How do I get a cash flow positive condo in Toronto as an investment property? Okay, so I think there's a couple of different things that we need to unpack in this video and a couple myths that we kind of need to debunk. So the first thing is time in the market is your best friend. People always say, you know, time in the market is more important than timing the market in real estate. And that is absolutely true when it comes to Toronto condos. So oftentimes it can be very difficult to find a cash flow positive condo on day one in Toronto. So typically what we're doing with our clients is we're um, creating a strategy to create a cash flow positive condo in Toronto. And I'm going to describe that in a second to you. The second thing is, to make sure that you account for deficits at the beginning. As human beings, we try to avoid pain, right? We wanna do everything that we possibly can to avoid pain, and one of those pain points for us is losing money, right? Like, that's a huge one for people. And so, um, if we're presenting great quality condos to clients, let's say, for instance, there's a AAA location, so downtown Toronto, near transit, near groceries, potentially walking distance, the financial district, that kind of thing. So a lot of great features that a tenant would love to have from a rental property perspective. Let's take that as option one. Very difficult to cash flow, but is something that um, is very favorable in the marketplace for tenant placement, okay? So low vacancy. We'll say option number two. There is a condo that um, seems like a great deal, right? Maybe it's listed at 600,000 and we're able to negotiate it down to 550. It sounds amazing. Everybody that's watching this video goes, that sounds like a great deal because I can't do that in Toronto uh, very frequently. But it's not close to transit. There's not a whole heck of a lot of um, great features about this property. Maybe we're getting a discount because nobody else wants it. It's near the garbage, it doesn't have a good view, doesn't have a lot of natural light. It's not near transit, not near groceries, anything like that, okay? That one, let's say that one breaks even and the first one that we discussed uh, costs you $150 a month. Most people are purchasing condos in Toronto for the long-term potential and the appreciation in the market, okay? So one thing that I wanna take into consideration with any of my clients, I would always recommend that they go with option A because I'm getting a better quality property. I'm not just going off, um, you know, uh, I'm not making my decision off of $150 a month when I could potentially be sacrificing thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long, in the long term for um, this overall investment. So one thing that I always do with my clients is account for deficits at the start. I never want my clients to make any decisions on $150 a month. That's basically like a cell phone bill right now. So what we'll do is when we're placing tenants or we're purchasing investment properties, especially condos with our clients in Toronto and they're running at a deficit, we will take that deficit and allocate it towards their closing costs. So for instance, if we know that they're um, in a deficit of $150 a month, but we expect in two years they're going to turn the tenant over and they're going to be break even or cash flow positive, I'm going to take that $150 a month by 24 months and I'm going to set that aside for my clients as part of their closing costs so that they're never making a decision in the future. Uh, for example, most people are sure stressing about money in January or February after Christmas because everybody gets pretty tight at that point in time. I don't ever want my clients to be making a decision on, oh, I should get rid of this condo because it's burning $150 a month. No, let's set aside that cash on the front end so that you're not ever making an emotional decision when it comes to investing because you never should do that, okay? The third thing goes to that second point, which is strategic tenant placements, okay? We all know it can be very difficult to get a tenant out of a problematic tenant out of your property, okay? One thing that, and I think to this point, we're not doing this in an unethical fashion. We need to do this in a very ethical way. And how do we do strategic tenant placements? When you have several applications and you're likely to have more applications on condo A because it is more of a desirable condo than condo B, 
we let's say we've got three applications one person is here on contract um, and their contract expires at the end of next year the other potential candidates uh, somebody who wants to stay for four or five years some people go oh, okay well that would be great to have consistent income or to sign a longer um, lease with somebody but you would be unable to recoup the higher rents if the rental market continues to increase so strategically you may want to place a tenant that is more likely to turn over in one to two years so that you can recoup the higher rents as the market continues to appreciate. So we wanna be a little bit more strategic with our tenant placements on the front end. In option B, you might only have one application and you might be burning capital through vacancy or you might just be desperate and you might have to put somebody in there that's gonna stay for five years and you're not gonna be able to increase the rents, right? So though option A maybe it doesn't look as great in this example because we're technically losing money. It's a short-term duration with a long-term outset to make you more money with your condo. Option B looks great on paper right now, but could likely sacrifice the overall returns in the future because we're looking at $150 a month. We shouldn't be making a decision on five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars on $150 a month. I'd never want my clients to look at it from that lens. And so I think with cash flowing in Toronto condos, thanks Geb, um, with cash flowing in Toronto condos, we create cash flow with Toronto condos through strategy. We don't necessarily buy cash flow positive condos in Toronto. Doesn't mean that they don't exist, but we're really narrowing down the available inventory for you as an investor that could otherwise, um, you, you know, it's going to limit your options that could otherwise provide you better overall returns in the long term. So if you take these three things into consideration, time accounting for any deficits that you could potentially have at the beginning um, in strategic tenant placements all of these three things combined will lead to you cash flowing with your condo in Toronto Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching the video today. If you want to connect with me, it's at Pace of Base on Instagram. Really appreciate you checking out the Canadian Real Estate Channel and I will see you guys in the next video.